Hi, this is my um, Ryobi 42 inch uh, 100 amp hour zero turn mower. And uh, it's uh, two and a half years old. The lead acid batteries finally gave out. I'm no longer able to uh, mow my three quarters of an acre in one shot. So I had a choice of replacing the lead acid batteries or uh, swapping them out for some lithium batteries. I did successfully swap them out for some uh, lithium batteries and uh, basically had to purchase uh, three sets of components. Uh, one is a new charger to charge lithium batteries. The second one is to uh, uh, buy a new uh, battery meter for the uh, side panel on the mower and of course the batteries themselves. Uh, also in this video, I'm gonna go through the details of each uh, of those three. Plus I'm gonna show how I altered the power plug on the back to accept the new power plug from the new lithium uh, charger. Hope you enjoy it. So, so for this uh, Ryobi, battery swap out. Uh, there's three products that I basically uh, picked up for this, trying to keep this as simple as possible. One is the uh, smart charger with the uh, standard plug, the um, volt amp meter with the uh, bus bar, and then uh, four batteries. Um, hopefully these batteries should be the same size as the batteries are in there to make the swap pretty easy. The only other pieces I need for the swap, I think is gonna be one wire. Uh, everything else uh, came as shown here in terms of uh, like all the wiring we need for the voltmeter. Um, so hopefully that's all we'll need. This is the um, TR16H battery capacity tester, or as I would call it, it's a volt amp meter uh, that shows battery life. Uh, it comes with a very small set of instructions and uh, Probably a couple of the key things here is I have the uh, 100 amp uh, version, uh, which is configured like this for wiring. And uh, it also talks about how to um, set the upper and lower limits so that you can determine how much of your battery's uh, charged or discharged levels. So that's the instructions. The other side is, of course, unlegible, so illegible. Uh, it comes pretty well packed in foam. Uh, the meter is going to be a little bit larger than what I have in my uh, current mower. Uh, it comes with a wing nut and a clamp. To clamp it in the hole, the hole has to be enlarged. Uh, it comes with a very long set of wires. I'm going to say it's probably well over four or five feet of wiring and then uh, this here is the shunt uh, connects to the battery um, as it shows in the instructions uh, this will connect on the negative side of the battery uh, heading to the um, to the motors the electric motors and the way it looks is that This will get connected here. And maybe we gotta figure out which one to put in first. Oh, here we go. So this gets connected here. And this will be connected to this one. Goes in this way, snaps in. This connection is not actually uh, stamped in, but uh, it's a pretty snug fit. So if it goes according to plan, um, we'll take this bolt out and uh, hopefully it'll uh, bolt directly to the battery and this one will be out to the uh, motors. Uh, the other wire connections, there's only one other wire that needs to be added that's not supplied and that is the power supply for uh, this system and that has to come from the positive terminal on the battery. And this would be a, um, a connection of the battery to uh, one of these two ports. I think these two ports are both labeled as B plus, uh, which is positive battery. So you can put it into either one of these. I did some reading on the, um, the battery meter and a couple additional pieces of information for interest that came out of the instructions. Um, they do recommend uh, ventilating the sampler or that, that bus bar 
Um, apparently you don't want to cover it up because it does get warm, especially with uh, maximum uh, amperage. Now, uh, the zero turn mower, even with the blades turning, doesn't really use that much amperage, so it shouldn't heat up that much. Um, another thing is the, uh, the LCD screen, it warns that you want to keep it, the LCD screen itself, between negative 10 Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you go out of those, uh, if the, out of that temperature range for any extended period of time, uh, that could damage the LCD screen, which I found kind of interesting. And uh, from my observation after uh, installing it, uh, it does have a memory, so the high and low limits for the zero to 100% battery life, when you set those limits, it does remember what those limits are. Now this is the smart charger that I purchased for um, charging the lithium batteries. I believe I've got the P3648, which does uh, 36 volts and 48 volts up to uh, 13 amps with my 48 volt uh, system. Um, so we'll open this up and see what, what it came with. Nice foam packing, <clears throat> cables, set those here. Pretty good size unit. And the instructions. Uh, the unit is identified as I planned, uh, P3648. Uh, looks like the company name is HTRC. Um, got a setting for 36 and 48. And we can, uh, it'll use 13 volts and we can change the modes. I believe that'll be changing these here. Uh, there's the power connection for the AC, uh, plug into here, power switch, fan, and over here we've got a plug for the clamps to connect to the battery. Uh, I bought this set because it came with this particular set because it came with this uh, tri-plug, I'm not sure what this is called offhand. Uh, because that's the shape of the plug that goes into my Ryobi uh, lawnmower. And uh, this connector will be plugged right into here. So this can be plugged right into the back of my mower. So I won't need these and save those for something else. Uh, it's not a very heavy cable because it's not, use, not using a lot of amps. So not a bad looking unit. And we'll have to see if this thing is going to fit in the, uh, in the mower. Comes with a small set of instructions. And so we're going to read up about this to see what I actually got. But looks like we're all set to go on the charger side. And this fell out of the box when I was opening it up. Uh, comes with a couple of terminals. Um, it actually has uh, markings on there for up to 60 amps, which is interesting. Um, but I think that uh, what you can use these for is to uh, cut off your clamps, uh, attach these terminals, and then attach this directly to your uh, battery with plus and minus. That would allow you to uh, mount the box uh, directly onto your mower, and then you just have to find a place to uh, either store this cable, plug it in, or uh, build some sort of a, a wall-mounted connector in, uh, on your mower to uh, to just run the power wire up right to the mower. Um, there's not a lot of room inside there. It's possible I could see if there's if there's a room to put it in, but I think I'm just going to stick with uh, trying to get this to work and you know, see if that fits into the back of the Ryobi uh, after it gets rewired. So here's the uh, charging port for the uh, Ryobi. And the configuration is a little bit different than the plug that I got with the charger. There's a couple of uh, tabs down in here. That tab and this tab here, little flat tabs. 
uh, one of the possibilities is to uh, break those off and so then the new plug can fit here's the new plug the triangles the right size but uh, it doesn't go all the way in because you can see a little cross piece in there hits those tabs and prevents them from uh, fully seating but the pins look like the right size so you can either um, cut the webs out of the new plug which is here on the left or I can break those tabs off inside there and then allow uh, this plug to go in there all right uh, what seemed to work was uh, just grabbing with the needle nose and just keep twisting them back and forth until it breaks off like that so we've modified the charging port by taking those two tabs off and those two tabs were interfering with these two webs on the uh, new charging plug with the uh, new charger so now this uh, plug will fit easily into the port just like the uh, old Ryobi and since I already had this on the uh, charger automatically started when it went into the plug and detected the batteries uh, one thing I did notice is that um, the green charging LED light that's on the charging port that used to blink when you were charging the batteries with your Ryobi charger, uh, that's not blinking anymore, so we've lost that function. A couple of additional pieces of information from the manual for the charger is it has a repair function um, on the charger, but that's not for lithium batteries. It's only for uh, iron uh, acid batteries. So you do not want to apply that function to your lithium batteries. Uh, the charger can be connect, left connected to the battery at all times to provide maintenance charging. It does that automatically. Um, the uh, full voltage for different batteries matches what's in the uh, manual for the, um, uh, from the, the battery manual. Uh, that's a maximum of 54.4 volts, which uh, converts to 14.2 volts, which is in the Chin's manual for the battery. All right, the uh, four new batteries came in, and uh, we're going to open them up and see what we've got in the boxes. They're shipped separately in their own boxes. All sorts of neat, uh, fragile labels. protected in foam and plastic. There's a couple fasteners and the protective covers on there. Got a product manual on the top. Silicone. A couple little protective caps. Carrying cap. Uh, on the side, it looks on the side. It looks just like it says in the uh, advertising online. Model LAF twelve one hundred, manufactured in China. And I think the thing we'll do is uh, we'll check the voltage on it. So we'll see what our voltmeter says thirteen point one. So I'll get the rest of these unpacked and we'll take a look at them. All right, we got them all out of the boxes. Got them lined up. Let's go ahead and uh, check the voltage on each of these. That's the first one again, thirteen point one. 13.1, and 13.1, all identical voltage according to my quite expensive Harbor Freight uh, voltmeter. Each of them did come with the, uh, the hardware.
bolt with a washer and a lock washer. I went ahead and uh, reviewed the uh, battery manual. There's a few interesting pieces of information. Um, a lot of it I was already aware of from uh, other YouTube videos. Uh, you know, charging voltages, um, maximum charging voltage is 14.6, for example. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and I mentioned this, uh, maybe mentioned this before, uh, that I'm up in uh, lower Michigan and the temperatures can get pretty cold here. Uh, checking in Lansing, it could get down to uh, zero degrees overnight on uh, several days during the year. Um, but the storage temperature for these batteries is 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So you have to be careful that you don't let the batteries get any colder than that. Uh, for that, I'm going to try and um, uh, look at when I get, get into the mower, uh, see if I can find some room for um, uh, insulation and uh, heater pads. Um, another thing here is that the discharge uh, levels and the charge levels uh, generally, it talks about fully charger, the charge range being somewhere around, uh, I'm not too worried about the low side, I think it's around uh, 13 volts. Yeah, 13 volts. Um, the high charge is, uh, what's considered 100% charge is 13.6. So 13 volts is considered uh, getting right down in that 5 to 0% range. Uh, these batteries, like, as we checked, were 13.1, which is around 15%. So I think what I'm going to do is, because of uh, the voltmeter, or the battery life meter, uh, has some settings on it. Um, and according to the instructions on that meter, uh, you need to set the high and low voltage uh, for it to determine zero to 100% uh, battery capacity. So uh, right now I'm pretty close to zero, so I'm gonna put it in the uh, mower and then I'll, I'll set the gauge uh, for the zero level and then fully charge the batteries in the mower um, uh, to establish the 100% charge level and then set the meter for that. I did find some additional information in the battery manual that I wanted to share. Uh, there's an error on page uh, 34 it mentions that the low temperature for storage is not to go below uh, negative 10 Celsius, and it translated that to negative 14 Fahrenheit, and that's not correct. It's positive 14 Fahrenheit. In uh, addition, um, some additional information is that the uh, over voltage disconnect uh, voltage is uh, 14.6, so the battery will shut off. Uh, won't, won't, it'll disconnect at 14.6 volts. And the low voltage disconnect uh, voltage is 11.6 volts. Um, in the advertisement, on the online advertisement, it uh, said that this has a low temperature sensor. Um, and and there's, nothing, there's no mention in the manual about a low temperature sensor to uh, shut the, uh, the charging or discharging of the battery for low temperature. It only mentions the voltage cutoffs.